All right, in this video, we are going to look into uh, getting some text from a website. And I have a couple of examples thrown over here. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of HTML text, uh, but notice here on this screen, um, it's showing last tide and next tide, and I have those times showing over here. So basically, I'm letting KOWP with uh, some regex pull this stuff. And then also, a couple other things, a uh, user did request. Um, you know, I'm not familiar with this particular game on, uh, I think it's a Steam or something like that, but they wanted the price of a key. So as you can see, I have that getting pulled and that's showing up right there on our custom live wallpaper. And then also one more thing too, using the uh, raw feature in KOWP. Uh, it's a new feature that's just released with the recent update. It can really slow the app down. I'm going to tell you. Um, but I can give you what I've learned um, in regards to maybe helping you avoid it. Uh, there's only certain times I would recommend using RAW right now, uh, and I'll explain that as we get into it. But what I'm doing here is I'm pulling that image right there, as you can see right there, and that's the that's what I'm using some regex to actually get this link to that image right there. And um, as, you, as you can see here, if I go to, uh, let me see, open image in new tab, boom. See, notice that link right there? That's what I'm letting uh, KOWP pull. As you can see, that, that web address right there matches that right there perfectly, and then we're getting that image. So, a lot to look at here. Uh, definitely some trial and error. I'm not a regex professional by any means. Uh, you know, this website right here is where I learned a lot of the basics. So, regex1.com, and, you know, why not use the website to show you how to, you can parse some HTML, if you will. Uh, from what I can gather, I'm no, I'm not a real big coder by any means. Uh, a lot of folks are really against parsing HTML um, using regex. There's other techniques, but uh, this is what we have in KOWP, so I'm going to show you how I do it. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look. I have this screen. Nothing should really change, maybe, unless the key price changes or maybe the tide's going to change depending on what time I get done with this video because I'm sure I'm going to pause and resume sometime but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into KOWP and I'm going to uh, delete this. I have it saved so that I can share it with you but I'm going to start from scratch that way you can follow along with this. Alright so we're creating a blank preset and what I'm going to do first is we're going to mess around with this high tide low tide stuff and I'm going to show you how you can cut stuff out of it to get the information that you want. And there's some important things to, to keep in mind as we are going about uh, doing all this stuff. So that web address is this one right here. You can go over to Tides Near Me. And what you can do is once you do that, you go to Tides Near dot me go to get nearby tides if you want to mess around with this go to some website where you want to get some information from by all means you don't have to do this one but you know it when you go get location it's going to pull up the closest place to you and it's going to give you some tide times all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy and paste that into kowp and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set it as a global all right so i'm going to add and i'm going to call this tides and I'm going to create a text global. And I'll show you why I'm doing this. It kind of helps, helps keep things organized. Since we want to pull multiple pieces of information, maybe it's just good to have one place to go back and refer to some things instead of constantly having to make our little code longer and longer and longer. So there's our web address. And what I want to do to this is I want to do a WG on it, a web get. So maybe I should do this instead. Uh, let me select all and delete. And let me do a web get first. So I'm going to go down here to WG, I'm going to do the text, because we can do this one without doing the raw feature, and I'm going to paste that web address right there. And notice it's already pulling it up because it's stored in my cache. It may not pull up for you initially. What you're probably going to have to do is, uh, once we get the text showing, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go back to my items. I'm going to add some text. Inside of my text, I'm going to label this as GV Tides because that's what I called this. So GV Tides. I don't think in my initial one I called it Tides. So if you get the file, um, if it's not called that, nonetheless, it's some of the same ideas. Maybe I named my global variable something a little bit different. But notice it shows this. Well, technically, we don't want it to show that. But if I save this and go back to my home screen, notice it's showing not the web address. It's actually showing some HTML text. That's what that text option will do in KOWP. 
it'll show a bunch, even though here, now I bet when I open this back up, it's still showing the web address right here, but it's actually showing some HTML text. So I'm gonna show you some things too that will help out before we actually dive into cutting stuff out of it. First of all, I'm going to uh, fit width and I'm gonna bump this on up. Let me do fixed width, Never mind. Fixed width, and I'm gonna bump this up to like 720, that way I can get most of the screen filled up with text. And I'm going to, I'll leave the size at, I'll bump it up to 25 so you can see it. Maybe that might be a little bit too much. Now notice it's showing here, let me zoom in on this, but it's showing just that GV tides. But if I save this, go back to my home screen, I actually can see some text. And what I want to get out of this is I want to get the last tide and the next tide. And I want, I want to get the high low. But the problem here is this though. Next tide shows up down here. I wish I, it's not clear and it's not even clear on my phone. You'll realize that sometimes this text will not show up clear until you start cutting information out of it. But the problem is last tide and next tide also pop up in other spots. I don't know if you can read that down there, but it says next tide, uh, last tide. It shows up in various spots in this HTML text. So what I want to do is I want to try to cut out parts of this stuff to where maybe last tide and next tide only show up one time in this long list of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I want to cut some of this stuff out. Now, notice again, the web address is not show or the only the web address is showing there. Let me show you how you can get it to pop back up in KOWP. Watch this. If I go and I uh, close out of KOWP and then I... Uh, open KOWP back up, I bet it's going to be showing that HTML text in here now, as you can see. And actually it's quite a bit clearer in here than what it is on my home screen. But nonetheless, I don't know if you can read this, but it did say VAR stations. If I could cut out everything after VAR stations from this, then I would only have last tide and next tide showing up once in what I have left. So basically I'm trying to cut out everything from here on down. Now what we're going to have to do is do a little bit of regex to do that. At least that's what I do. Um, so I'm going to go back to this GV tides. And what I want to do first of all is this. I want to do TC and I want to do some regex. So I'm going to do reg. And I don't know if you noticed, but there were some gaps in between all these different lines. And we have to cut those lines out to my knowledge to do this regex. So I'm going to come here. And what do I want to do regex? What do I want to search for? So whatever you're searching for, you have to put it in quotations. What are you searching for? What do you want to replace it with? Now, if I close that up, that's what's going to show everything because it's searching for nothing. It's going to replace it. That's not going to change anything. But if I, what do I want to search for in my regex? I need a comma there as well. Inside of my regex in this quotation, I want to search for uh, blank lines, basically where maybe this HTML code, somebody press enter and you know, you're going to a new line. I want to get rid of those. So to do that, I need to do... Um, if you go over to that regex1.com, you'll see some of these tutorials as well. But if we do that slash there, make sure you do the right, the right backslash. There's two different ones. You know, don't do that one. Do that one. But it's going to search for those line breaks. And look what happened. I don't know if you noticed that, but let me delete that again. See how we got all these big blank spaces? Let me check that. See all these spaces? Well, what's going to happen when we come in here and we take this and we do that? the correct backslash with the N is going to remove those. I don't know the correct terms for this. I've, I know enough just to where I can explain it to you, but the, the correct terminology here, I'm not spot on. So it'll be all right. But notice what happens. Boom. If I check this, all that, all them enters, all them different lines have got deleted. So now if we save this, we go back to the home screen. It's clear now, but notice it's cut out all the line breaks and stuff like that. Now, what I want is I want last tide and I want next tide. But if you look through here, if you can read this, uh, next tide shows up here, last tide shows up here. It turns out, though, what we can do, var stations. Var stations was something that I pointed out a moment ago. But if I can cut out everything from var stations on down, then I'm only going to have the, where is it at? Uh, next, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Last tide and next tide next tide will be only showing up one time in this piece. So let me show you how to cut all that stuff out. So to do that, I'm going to go back into this global variable. I've done the regex on that. Now I want to do some more regex. So I'm going to go here in front. I'm going to do TC reg again, put my comma, 
make sure I'm doing an R instead of a T. And then what we want to do is we want to search for VAR stations. Now watch what happens here. I'm going to put comma. I'm going to do quotations, comma, quotations, and I'm going to close it up. Now, this is just what I do by default. I go ahead and do these, and inside of here is what you want to search for between these two quotations, and then whatever you want to replace it with, you put it in between the other quotations. So we have to be case sensitive here, to my knowledge. VAR stations did have a space in between it. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for right now, though. I'm going to replace VAR stations with... Um, a, 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 just, A, just to show you what's going to happen here. If we look through this code now, I can actually see the A's right there. If I save it, I go back to my home screen where it said VAR stations a moment ago. Now it says a bunch of A's because that's what I searched for and that's what I replaced it with. Well, I want to search for VAR stations and I want, not only do I want to replace VAR stations, but I want to replace everything after VAR stations. So the period will represents in regex, I, I think it represents any character, so it can be a letter, number, or whatever, and then this little asterisk right here, I think that's called a clean star, if I'm not mistaken, again, my terminology may be wrong, but it's going to search for this star, this asterisk means zero or more repetitions of any character, that period represents some character. Now watch what happens when I check this. Look, look at what just happened. We have just cut out every single thing from VAR stations on down, except now, remember, from VAR stations on down, all that stuff we had, we replaced it with those A's. To get rid of those A's, what we have to do is go back into here and basically delete these A's and just leave our double quotations. So what that's going to do essentially is delete everything from VAR stations on down because I'm putting this dot and this asterisk after VAR stations. I'm not putting it before. If you put put it before VAR stations, it's going to delete the stuff in front of it. All right, so let me check that. Let me save it. Let me go back to the home screen. And notice VAR stations and all that stuff was gone. Now let me point out some things to you too for regex as well. If I were to do, if I were to delete the dot and the star at the end and I put it at the front, watch what happens. It's still going to delete VAR stations, but it's not. It's going to delete everything in front of it. All this stuff is the stuff that was after VAR stations. So be careful where you put that period and that asterisk. So I want to put it at the end because I want to search for VAR stations and everything after VAR stations, and I want to replace it with nothing. So basically what we have just done is we've cut out everything um, where we had the next hide and last hide showing multiple times. Now we have last hide and we have next hide only showing up one time in this piece. So this is what we want to start uh, parsing or, or getting information out of. Now my goal first of all is to take this guy and let's figure out um, what the next hide is. So I don't know if you can read this, but probably you just saw it a moment ago. Where is it at? Da, 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 da. Okay, last tide. Okay, let's do last tide. Last tide was high. I want to get that word high out of this thing. So what we're going to do is last tide only shows up one time. So I want to search for last tide. I'm going to create a new global variable, and I'm going to call this one last. Because I don't want to go back in. This is this is completely optional here of creating multiple globals. But basically, notice this code here is already getting kind of crazy. If we we can use this global that we've simply called GV tides, we can actually use it in here to make our code not as crazy looking. But again, what I want to do here, this is what we're getting ready to accomplish. We want to search for last tide, and we want to delete everything. Um, in front of last hide and that should leave us with this word high and there's some ways to get rid of these semicolons and spaces we can just use the period um, the period is any character so let me show you that we're going to get rid of last hide and everything in front of it so first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my GV tides that we've already cut out the VAR stations and stuff and there's that information now I want to do some regex on it so TC reg comma tides, what do we want to search for? We want to search for last tide. And I'm going to take this step by step with you. Be sure it's case sensitive. There was a space between it. 
and um, what do we want to replace it with? For right now, again, just for tutorial purposes, let's replace it with a bunch of S's just so you can see that it is getting replaced. Don't forget your parentheses. Let's check this and notice, um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna go ahead and bump this size up so I don't have to keep on saving it. Since I've already cut out a lot of my text, boom, I like that. And, uh, okay. Now it looks like it didn't update, but hold up, let me back up. Let me go back to my globals and double check this. Um, oh yeah, okay. So we're taking GV tides, last tide, we're replacing it with a bunch of S's. Okay, now what we have to do though, since we've created a new global here, what we're going to have to do now, had I applied this code into here, now you can, again, you can make that code, but we're going to have to create a, a, a last and a next and a time and all that stuff. Had we applied the code in here, we could see it on our home screen, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add one more text item. I'm going to pop this one at the bottom. Uh, let me go ahead and just do some fixed width. Let's bump it on up. And we'll bump the size up a little bit as well so you can see it. All right, what do I want this text to show? I want to use that new global that I did. And what did I call it? Last. It's not DF, it's GV last. Okay. Now notice it's showing just the web address, but if we save this and go back to the home screen, it's going to be some stuff that, okay. You see things are mixing together. And this is You can see why this can get kind of, uh, drives you crazy. Um, basically what I want to do, since I'm kind of done, that first part of the tutorial here was just me really showing you how to cut out VAR station. So I don't really need that anymore. Um, I still have my global saved and I'm gonna pop this up to the top. So if we save that, this is that new one, the GV last, and we go back to the home screen. Notice what it's done, it's searched for uh, last tide and we replaced it with a bunch of S's. But not only do we want to do that, notice it's not showing up correct here. What can we do? We can close KLWP. I like doing this because it kind of refreshes it. That's how you can refresh it. Maybe you don't have to do that in your phone. But now it does show the actual regex stuff instead of just the, the whatever the web address is or whatever I have in here in my code. So I want to search for last tie, but I don't want to replace it with anything. But remember, we want to delete everything in front of last tie. So I'm going to do a dot and an asterisk, and it's going to do exactly what we just said. Remember last tie earlier, it had a colon, and then it had the whatever, whether it be high or low. Well, now we got pretty much what we want. Now, what's some other things we want to do here? I want to get rid of this colon and this white space. So if we come right here and what we're searching for, and we put two dots, do you notice how that stuff just got deleted? See that? All right, now what do we want to do? So all I'm trying to get is this word high out of all this junk. All right, the last thing we had, the last tide we had was a high tide. So what I'm gonna have to do is do some more regex on this. I'm trying to get the word high. So TC reg, put my comma, I always come over here to the end, comma, double quotations, comma, double quotations, and I put my parentheses. That way I can kind of get my whole piece back. Because right now it's not going to search for or replace anything. But basically what we want to do now is we want to do a digit. Um, if we can get rid of that four and everything after the four, all we should have left is the word high, finally. Now the reason why, you might just say, why don't you just type in high? Well, this is going to change. High is going to change to low, then low is going to change to high. Well, I want this regex and, you know, KLWP to do all this stuff for me. So that's why I'm doing all this. And if I search for a digit. So the way we search for a digit is we'll have to use that symbol we did with the N earlier like that. Now, when we put that and a D, it's going to search for the digits. Notice all my numbers are gone slash D. If you don't put the slash, it's just going to search for D's. Watch what happens here. If I delete that, it's going to take all the D's. Um, was there any D's up here? I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Well, watch this. If I, if I do a capital D, it gets rid of the D's and it used to say EDT. But what we want to do, oh yeah, okay, watch. Here we go. Here's one. Notice the word tied. 
If I put a D there, now it says tie. Huh, we don't want that. We want to look search for digits. Some will do slash D. And really, the four, there was a four or something right here that we just got rid of. Well, let's search for it and let's search for everything that occurs after that digit. Everything I do, period, star, any character, check out what just happened. We searched for the digit, and digit was the first thing. That it was a four, I think, right there after that high. If you go back and look, rewind a few seconds or minutes ago. Well, we're searching for that digit and everything that occurs after it. Any character, any number of repetitions, and we're replacing it with nothing. So now, out of all that stuff, we have gotten the word high from our last. All right? So we're, we got one part done. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. So we're going to go back to this text, and I'm going to go ahead and put in front of this, since this is always going to be my last tide, I'm going to say last tide. I don't have to change that because it's always going to be the last tide that gets pulled from there. Granted, this uh, HTML text stays the same, which I don't see why it should change anytime soon. All right, what about the next tide? So what are we going to have to do there? Well, what we need to do... Let me think. Globals, okay, last. What we want to do now is pretty much the same thing. Um, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and add a text item. I know I got rid of the one while I go because I said I didn't need it anymore, but I'm actually going to uh, use it just to show you what our next little regex piece is going to be. So what I'm going to put down here is GV Tide, so I can kind of get that stuff that I cut var stations out of earlier. So GV Tides. All right, so it's positioned at the bottom. Let's just bump the size up a little bit. i gotta, I got to change this to uh, fixed width, and let's just bump the size up so we can see it. Okay, hopefully you can see most of that. I'm about to get rid of it right here in a second anyway. So we've got earlier where was it okay last tide we got the high see how we got that word high and remember that four i was talking about let me make this bigger we'll make it wider and bigger so you can see it without me having to save so much so what the last thing we accomplished was we got the word high from last tide now i want to get what the next tide is well the next tide is going to be low automatically but i'm going to go ahead and show you how we can get this word low and the only thing we really have to change is one piece, I think, or maybe a few pieces, but basically I want to get this word low and we're going to get rid of everything else. We're going to get rid of the stuff in front of it and the stuff behind it. We can actually use this global here. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it next. So what's my next tide going to be? And hopefully we're going to be able to get low out of this. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to come over here and take this regex that we've already done, that we got the word high, Oops, I never copied it, did I? Select all, copy, and let's go and paste that into next. Now for right now, it's just going to show high. But if we change one thing, I think we're going to be golden. If we change this uh, dot star last tide to dot star next tide, I bet you it's going to say low. Bam, check it out. Because basically it's the same setup let me save that. Basically, it's the same setup. It's going to search for regex. It's going to search for next tide, which is here. But since we put that dot and that asterisk there, it's going to search for everything or take everything in front of next tide, and it's going to replace it with nothing. And then also in this code, we applied, what, two dots to get rid of a space and a colon. And then we also search for the digit. So if I back up out of here, we search for the digit that happens after next tide. So we got low. This is the first digit that occurs. And then we search for that digit and everything after it, and we replaced it with nothing. So out of all this stuff, we're cutting just that word out right there, low. All right. So what I'm going to do is go back up here to my text, and I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say next tide. Is going to be GV next. All 
Now, right now, notice it's showing the funky stuff, but we know that this should be saying low. If we save this, we go back to the home screen. We got a high and we got a low. Bam. Pretty cool, huh? Our next objective is to actually pull out last tide high. We want to pull this time, 4.37 a.m. I'm not going to pull the EDT. I think I'm actually going to use the EDT to help me uh, cut some information out of it. And then we're going to come back and do the same thing for the next tide. We're going to show the 11.35. Now, I think, what time is it right now? Uh, 10.36? Okay, I should have this done within the next hour. So, Going, uh, let me close KOWP again so I can get it to refresh and show low on my advanced editor. So let's close it, open it back up, and it should show low inside of my advanced editor. Very good. All right, I'm going to leave this stuff down here at the bottom. I think we need it. <laughs> and now, what do I want to do? Um... Okay, what we're going to have to do here is let, let's try to get the last tide time. So last tide was high. We got that showing. We want to get this 4.37 a.m. So what I want to do here is I want to delete. I want to take. Okay, let me make sure I'm doing this right. I'm going to take this global variable. And of course, there's other ways to do this, I'm sure. But I'm going to roll with it like this. So let's call this global variable last time. So text last time. So the time of our last tide. I'm going to paste what our last tide was. It's just going to show high right now. But if I come back in here and I delete um, this part here, Basically, I'm going to get my digits back. And what we want to do is we want to cut uh, everything after EDT. So EDT, um, now yours might be a little bit different depending on your time, but hopefully you will have something that shows up always after this time frame here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all that stuff out. I don't need anything after uh, the 4.37 a.m. Everything else can go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some TC reg. Whoops. Go back to my last time. So TC reg comma, what is up with my spelling today? All right. And comma, double quotations, comma, double quotations, parentheses. That way I can still just get back and look at see what I want to cut out. I want to cut out everything from EDT on back. So I'm going to tell it to search for EDT. Now watch what happens when I type in EDT right here. Case sensitive. EDT. You see how it's getting rid of the EDT? You see how? Because I'm replacing it with nothing. Now if I do dot asterisk, now it gets rid of everything after EDT. Now what we can also do, this is just me being picky. There was a space between AM and EDT. If I put a one per period, you're not going to see anything change. But if I put another one, it's going to get rid of that M. See that? So I'm just going to put that there. That way if I ever go to try to center stuff up, it's not going to be thinking there's something there. Maybe you don't even need to do that period. But really it's getting rid of that one space that's right there. Um, now, we got to get rid of this word in front of the 437. we got to get rid of the word high. So what I'm going to do is some cut. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky. What we're going to have to do here, either we're going to cut... Um, we're going to cut the first four letters here. So watch what happens if I do this. I'm going to do TC, not capital. I don't think it really matters, but whatever. TC, cut, comma. And I want to uh, cut my first four letters. So after my first four letters, i got to put a comma. Now right now, watch what happens. If I close this up with a parentheses, it's just going to show the first four letters. But now, after the first four letters, I want to show, say, the next, um, how many digits do we need for 4.37 a.m.? So if, I'm just going to count it as 0, 4, colon, 3, 7, space, a.m. So about eight digits is what we need. I'm going to say, hey, show the next 10 digits. <laughs> now, as you can see, I could have played around with it like this. 
After the first four, after the word high, show the next five digits, it's going to show 437. But you want to leave some room in there. There's my six space. Now, see, now I'm showing my A. Let's show the next seven characters. Let's show the next eight characters. I'm going to say 10 just to play it safe. But, I mean, eight, I think you would have been fine because when it turns like 1037 or something, you got to at least show the, the one there and make sure you're showing the M. But, boom, I got it. Here's the problem, though. Um, if this thing here is not high. We don't want to cut the first four. We want to cut the first three. Now in this case, I don't want to cut the first three because high has four letters, low has three letters. So we can do an if then here. So we can say if our GV last is high. So um, let me see here. If GV last, I think that's what I called it, right? GV last is equal to high. I want to cut the first four like I just showed you. But what, to, what do I want to do otherwise? Otherwise, I only want to cut three. So I'm going to take this same code up to right there, and I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to have to fix some parentheses, I'm sure. I'm going to copy put a comma, and now let's paste that guy into here. I'm sure I'm going to have to fix some parentheses. But now, so if GV last was equal to high, I want to cut my first four, which is what you see there. Otherwise, I only want to cut three because GV last is either going to be high or low. So I want to make sure I'm cutting the right number of pieces, um, either four characters, cutting the first four and showing the next ten, or cutting the first three and showing the next ten. That's what this four comma ten and three comma ten does. Now let's see if I can fix my parentheses. Is that all I needed? Boom. Okay, we should be good to go. So since GV last is high, it's cutting four, but um, if I come up here and change this to low, which GV last is not low right now, so it's going to run that second condition. Notice it's only going to cut three out of this regex. Um, it's going to cut the first three and show the next ten, but I definitely want this to be high. And you'll see, it, maybe that makes sense to you, maybe it doesn't. I mean, it, it definitely, I know this stuff can get crazy. But basically what we have just done now is we have GV last time. So let's take that global variable, let's go back to our text up here at the top, and I'm just going to say uh, high, and I mean you can put hyphens, whatever you want to do. I'll just, I'll put a hyphen, what the heck. And then I'm going to put my GV last time. Last time. All right, so right now it looks kind of crazy. I'm going to check it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back to my home screen. Bam. My last high tie was at 437. So let's do something very similar for our next piece. Now again, as you can see, it's not showing up correctly in here. I'm just gonna do this anyway, it don't take but a second. I close KOWP, I open it back up, and now we should see the 437 up here. It just like refreshes it or something. But uh, now, what about next time? How the heck do we do this? Um, I think all we have to do is change our last to next, I think. Let's find out. <laughs> Select all, let's copy, and let's create a new global variable for next time. All right, I th I'm just going out on a limb here. I'm trying to remember how I did it while I go. Let's do uh, next. I think this is right. I think we're good. Boom, 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 boom. Next. And what, okay, here's the problem. I know this next one should be at 1135, and here's the deal. Because it's not GV last anymore that we want to talk about. We want to talk about GV next. And our next is actually going to be a low. Boom, there we go. 
So if GV next equals high, it's going to cut the first four, but since it's not high, it's going to cut the first three and then show the next 10. That's exactly what we want. So all we had to do there was quickly change our last tides to next tides and um, just a little bit of coding there, but that wasn't too bad, I hope. Um, depends on, if this is your first time doing regex, you're probably like, what the hell is he doing? But anyway, uh, so we got GV next time. Let's go pop that over here to our text. As you can see, okay, let me put my hyphen in there to make it all nice, whatever. Check that, save it, go back to the home screen. As you can see, boom. Now, let's go back and recap on that. So if we go and look, even if I refresh this page, and if, uh, I mean, the, the tides haven't changed, changed yet. Uh, how long is this video right now? Okay, we're at 36 minutes. So, uh, you know, that's the, uh, let's, let's call this, let's break it up into some parts. Uh, this is part one, I'm going to call it, I don't know, um, raw, HTML, edit, regex, but uh, I did get some requests for this. I will, I will, I promise I'm going to create another video sometime where I'll show you how to get this. That's basically, in all honesty, this right here is the exact same thing, not the same code, but it's really doing the same idea of us going to KOWP and this really revolved around us not using raw per se, but when I go to do raw and whenever I do the next part of the video, the raw back here at the very beginning, what we started off with, when we did text, I changed this to raw and it's going to uh, pull the source code. Um, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and save this one, publish it, upload it, and then I might go ahead and back it on up with the uh, raw piece and maybe showing you how to do this as well. But I think 36 minutes, or going on 40 minutes is plenty to one video, plenty for one video. And uh, yeah, there you have it. That's uh, part one of maybe two or three parts on pulling information from websites. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.